want to do with the subject this morning of moving into the promises of God. Moving into the promises of God, he rules chapter 10, verse 19 to 36. Moving into the promises of God. And for our text, I want to look at Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23. Hebrews 10, 23. When it says, Let us go fast the confession of our faith without wavering. For he who has promises God, for he who promises, for he who has promised is faithful. For he who has promised is faithful. You know what? It doesn't matter how dark things appear. And as we journey through this life, we realize that things will get dark and things will get dismal. And sometimes we don't know how we are going to come true. It doesn't matter how things get dark in this life. There's always hope in Jesus Christ. The Bible says that the promises of God are yea and amen. You know what that means, beloved? It means that when God promises you something, that He will not change His mind. He does not take it back because you, but you, you, you get to that bad behavior, or you might forget, or you might not do His will. God is a God that when He promises, He gives you a gift. He does not take it back. The Bible says that there are over 3,000 plus promises in the Bible. 3,000 plus, and I, I, I put the word plus, plus, because there are so many other promises that are given within the word of God and given to the children of God. But as we research and as we look at the promises of God and as we pull them out, I believe that they are beneficial to all of our lives. And the promises of God are given to us as his children. The promises fall under two categories. There are limited promises. And their general promises. Limited promises and they are general promises. Let me give you an illustration about what a limited promise is. In Joshua chapter 1, verse 2, this is what the Bible says. Now, the, now my servant Moses is dead. This is what God is going to be saying to Joshua, the man of God. As he is going to go into the promised land. And as he's going to lead the children of Israel into the promised land. He said, Now my servant Moses is dead. Now therefore arise and go over Jordan. And all the people to the land which I have given them to the children of Israel. Why? It is a limited promise. Why? Because who, whom is it given to? Whom is this promise given to? It is given to the children of Israel. Because God is going to lead them into the promise now. A land that is, the Bible said that was thrown with milk and honey. It was liberty to them at that time. Because this is what God wanted to do in their lives. And it's not given to us the promise of going into the promised land and going into the land of Cana. was not given to us. As a people, it was given to the children of Israel. Then there are the general promises which fall under two categories. They are conditional promises. They are conditional promises. And from conditional promises are given to everyone. They are given to those who will serve God, who will walk with Him, and who will trust Him despite what they're going through. They're, they're can, but they come with a condition. Let me give you an example of a, a conditional promise. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5 and 6. This is a conditional promise that is given to the children of God. It's given to every child of God that will serve Him, that will, to, that will surrender their lives. 
promises. And this conditional promises are given to us as people of God, as we walk in the Lord, as we trust Him. And it doesn't matter what we do, as long as we remain steadfast in God, we are going to receive these promises. God has pledged these promises to His people. He has given the assurance that they are going to happen. Regardless of your color or class or creed, He has given us a promise that this is what I am going to do in your life. Now, a conditional promise can found in John chapter 14, verse 1 and 3. Listen to a conditional promise. Unconditional promise. Sorry, he says, in John 43 and 1 and 3, says, Let not your heart be. Trouble. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many what? Are many mansions. And if it were not so, I would have told you. I would have told you if it were not so. He said, unconditionally, I go to prepare a place for who? For you. And if I don't prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. Is it not a promise? Is it an unconditional promise?
believe that we can we can stand on the fence of, and then we can claim I'm gonna claim and and, and, and this is the this is the thing today where people believe that they can live anyhow, they can do anything and claim the promises of God. The devil is the lie this morning. The Bible tells us that we need to delight ourselves in God, that He must become the priority of our heart. And when we be, He becomes the priority.
You know, a lot of times we are on the operating table. Some of us have been there. And let me tell you, if you don't know the prayer, learn to go to the prayer wing. Then you don't know you're showing up true, you're going to come to that table. Yes, I know I'm Lord. Of his might. This is what he's telling them the, the, the saints, but all the whole 
found the Lord is deceitful little tricks, you know, you pay a trick for your mommy. And then they have truth and half life. And, and mommy, mommy and one, and because she don't know and she go down with half life. You know, so like children think that mommy and daddy are able to go. They think that we won't be there never. They tell my like children tell you something mommy and daddy know. I don't understand, mommy, you don't understand me. You don't understand you, I don't understand you.
and teach us how we can access the presence and the promises of God. I'm teaching us how we can do it. And if you want to hear me talk, talk, I'm preaching. I can't tell myself you want to preach to myself. Because when I want something from God, I'm getting older and I want to see God bless my life one way. Secondly,
our difficulties, our setbacks, the giants in our lives that come, the afflictions that come, there, when we go through them, they're going to bring a testimony of the goodness of Almighty God. When you come through the Bible, you're going to be more than 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 more Let me tell you what you need to do. Psalm 40, verse, verse 1 3. Psalms 40, verse 1 3. And this is what David said when he was going through a difficult moment in his life. Psalm 40, and all of us, every one of us will experience these things in our lives. As long as we are children of God, as long as we are in this world, we are going to go to high places and low ones. Because God is going to make us like unto himself. Psalm 40, verse 1 3 says, I waited patiently upon the Lord, and he inclined to me and heard my cry. He also brought me up out of a horrible pit, and out of a mighty clay, and set my feet there upon a rock and established my steps. That is what you want this morning. But you gotta, you gotta do what you operate in this principle. You gotta wait sometimes upon the Lord. You gotta wait upon him and trust him when you can trust him. Sometimes you cannot see how God is going to do it. Lord is going to do how. Friendly one is, and the one might have one of the chief princes came to help me. 
30, 30. 30, our hearts must be receptive to the promises of God. Our hearts must be receptive. These are some principles that operate within the kingdom. Our hearts must be receptive to the things of the kingdom, to the promises of God. Let me tell you, let me say to you this morning, it makes no sense. Let me just say to you that it makes no sense wanting God to bless you and prosper your life and you're not walking according to His will. Amen? And you're not doing what He tells you to do. Amen? Amen. You are not following His word. Amen? Amen. Obedience brings the what? Obedience brings God's blessings. The Bible said in Hebrews chapter 5 verse 8 that though He was a son, yeah, you learn your penis, but what? For the thing that he suffered. And how about being perfect in? He became the author of eternal salvation to all those who do what? All those who will be him. Obedience is of a great price to fit It's a, one of the great principles within the kingdom of God. And God, when God tells us to do something, He expects us to do what He says to us. And many of the promises and the things that God wants us to do are written. I written weird in his word, but so many people want to accept the revelation. They want God to tell them to talk to them in the ear. No, I didn't for a word from you. God speak to me and you want it in our ear. When we have the word of God, he, he writes his written to tell us this is what we should do. This is the way we should walk. Walk in it. Christ became perfect to the thing that he suffered. He learned obedience. The Son of God. What about us? What about us today? Obedience of a great is of a great price. If we're going to access the promises of God, God will not release His blessings. He will not release His, his prosperity in your life. God will not release His favor over you. If He cannot trust you, if you cannot be obedient, if you're a valuable person, that you don't seek to obey what He tells you to do, He can't control you. You know, when you, when you walk in rebellion, it comes God that He can't control you, God. I care what you tell me. You tell me this in your word, I care what you say. That is, that is what you're saying to God. But you seek to obey His word. He, he, and uh, Christ wants to give us eternal salvation. All those who obey Him, all those who obey Him, our hearts must be open to the word of God. Our hearts must be open. You cannot close your mind and your heart to the thing of God. The word of God is important. It's the behavior to which God speaks to us. James chapter 1 verse 21 and 22 says, Therefore lay aside all our awfulness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the law the implanted word which is able to save your soul. But he also goes on to tell us be what? Be doers of the word and not hearers only. When we only hear the word, what do we do? Talk to me, somebody. When we only hear the word, what do we do? Maybe this word is for you all. Maybe this, maybe this word, maybe this word for you. We deceive ourselves only when we hear the word and we don't walk in the word. When we don't seek to obey the word. Beloved, we are fooling ourselves. We are fooling ourselves. We must establish faith. You must begin to walk in faith, access the word by faith. Believe God through His word. And how does faith come? Romans 10, 17, but you know that scripture? How does faith come? Faith comes by what? Hearing. By hearing the word. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word. Maybe, maybe some of us can start home and watch TV dates on now. You watch TV dates on TV and get a word, right? Get a word on TV TV dates or whoever. Oh, Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of Almighty God. And that is why the house of God has been set up that we can come and become participators of the word of God, participants of hearing and, and receiving the word. So we must hear the word. We must begin to come learn how to confess the word. Speak the word. Tell God, Lord, this is what He said. And one of the things that we need to do is learn how to pray. Pray the word of God. Pray the word of God. Lord, Lord, this is what He said. And if, I, if I'm faithful to you, that you're going to bless me first. Don't share the devil. And Lord, pray the word. Stand up on the promises of the word of God. When you tell God what He said in His word, that He is bound by His word to honor His word. You need to speak the word. Let me tell you. It's a true thing that when you hear things, you know that you remember a lot of things that you hear. 
they sit down in your minds more readily than if you read them. That when you when you confess and you speak something up, you you more retain it than if you just read it. Because it goes into your spirit, it goes into through your ear, ear, and you're able to retain that thing that you've heard. That is why it's important that we speak the word. If you work the word, the word will work for you. If you work the word, if you seek to live out the promises of God, live out the thing of God, do what God has called you to do, to live in this life and to be the best that you can be. And you seek to obey God and to fellowship with Him. The word of God will work for you. The Bible says in Psalm 119, 105, your word is a light to my feet and a light to my path. It is the thing that guides my way, that directs my step. Oh, 
God wants us to walk. As we walk in four minutes, God says, God promises us increase. What am I preaching to this morning? Preaching to me, I'm preaching to myself. Because you know what's even more happy. A biblical promise is a declaration of God's intention to graciously bestow gifts upon an individual or group of people. You want God's blessing this morning? You want access to blessings of our money, God? Let's make it preaching out of no sorrow. When we begin to walk in the principles of God, let me tell you, there's no, there's no way that God will not bless you. There's no reason why God will not pour his blessing upon you. The Bible tells me in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23, let us hold fast the confidence, the confession of our fear, of our hope, before we give in. For he whose promise is God is fearful. When you are fearful to God, let me tell you another principle. When you are fearful to God, God will be fearful to you. It doesn't matter what the storm that you go through. It doesn't matter how difficult. It doesn't matter how many people tell you can. You can. People tell you can. You can. You can do this. And you can do that. You can achieve this. But let me tell you, when you walk in God, and you seek to obey God's word and his will, there's nothing that you will not be able to do. And fourthly, fourthly, the fourth principle, God blesses you, what should we do? We must thank God for His promise. And one of the things that we've not learned how to do, and I believe here, we've not learned to be thankful. I, I said that, that, is that a true statement? Is that a true statement? Everybody, everybody, go ahead. Is that a true statement? We've got to learn how to be thankful. Thanks, worship, I and mean, thanking God on us. And releases the promises of God and no other uh, principle can. Thanks, worship, thanking God for His goodness. Let me tell you, there's nothing like giving God glory and praise as you thank Him for what He's done for you, where He's brought you from. I don't care how difficult the matter that you're going through and you're facing, when you learn to be thankful, God sees a thankful heart. We must thank God for His promises. In our lost heavens, and reveal the promises and open the doors to receive it from God. When you learn to be thankful, when you learn to be thankful, when you learn to appreciate God and be thankful when He's concerned, God, then nothing God will not give you. You know, the Bible is saying that well, man is making man, man is making man. If you have a child, if you have a child and child is pleasant and let's say thank you, please, and all that, a lot of times others are. He's like, don't you know? Oh, that child is a real man, is That child is a real man, is But that's a child that's not going to be like, man, man, give me that one hand, man. A lot of times, you know what that child really wrote? Yeah. When you walk in God's favor, when you do things that please you, when you're thankful to God, God sees you as a man of child who's willing and who has submissive to his will. And when you keep your heart open and clear of darkness, he will, he will give you peace. You know, peace doesn't work for me, I'm just so you know. Maybe that is why a lot of us can't sleep at night. That's why a lot of us can't sleep at night. We say that we are Christian, but we can't sleep at night. Every day they tell me here. 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 Every day they tell me and we saw you afraid to dodge up with people doing that. Why? You can't sleep at night. Why? Because we don't have the peace of God. We pass it all understanding. We don't have the peace of God. And let me tell you, when you have the peace of God, you'll get to sleep anyway. It doesn't matter what you're going through, you'll get to sleep. Why? Because you have the peace of God. So the minister of the four verses says, be careful for nothing, but in everything by God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your heart and your mind through Jesus Christ. Amen. Let me tell you the peace that comes, that you don't worry about the Lord. You know, some of us have a point where there was a time in our lives, and I can testify, I just put my hand up, and if anybody said anything to you, you had a sharp tooth. If anybody said anything to you, you're not ready for them. You keep ready, you speak 
sharp and I'm ready for it. Every system was for me. I'm ready to eat this morning. But as you grow in grace, what happens? Something the Lord can eat is below your back, over your head. You don't worry about God. You don't worry about God. What people say? Because you realize that they are what they say can't change your story. They can't change your life. But God wants to establish your way. And God wants to bless us. God wants to make a way where there seems to be no way. God wants to open doors and bless his children in ways that we cannot begin to imagine. But beloved, we walk, we walk as human beings, and we don't access the presence and the, the purpose of God. We live, a lot of times we live for ourselves. Why? Because we don't spend time with God. How many, how many of us really spend time with God? We really spend time with God seeking God is will be done here on earth. Father, we thank you so much. And Lord, we have not lived up to our potential because Father, we don't know. 
know how. We don't know how. Oh Lord, release the Holy Spirit to guide us today. Release the Holy Spirit to guide us, Lord, and show us how to become the servants, Father, that walk in prosperity, walk in your blessings and favor. Because the disciples have to know the thing, but you've been told some of them who walk in quick way. Now bless us, Father, and you to be with us. Let our hearts know we commit ourselves into your hands. In Jesus' name. Let's all stand as we come. Have you enjoyed this word this morning? Amen. Have you enjoyed the word? Yes. Yeah.